Good evening, everyone. God bless you. We'd like to welcome you here to Presence of the Lord Christian Church in Corona, California. I'm Pastor David Martinez, and we're excited to be here. I say that all the time, but we are. We're excited to be here. And, and, and truth be told, we really need to be excited to be here, not because it's here in this particular building, but the Lord is here. Amen? The Lord is at hand. And, um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to fool you and tell you that I, I'm ready to see him every time he shows up because he's always here because really I blow it like everyone else does. But I know that even when I blow it and he's, he's here, my forgiveness comes with him and his love comes with him and, and his long suffering comes with him. And so regardless of where I'm at in my walk, I know that a God of compassion is, is the one that we serve. Amen. So uh, this evening, uh, we want to first of all welcome all those who are watching on either Facebook or YouTube. God bless you this evening. And uh, we're ready just to, just to go into his presence and run into his presence. Amen. And, and see him face to face this evening. So Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. Lord God, we give you all glory and honor. Father, we ask as we prepare ourselves to come into your presence, Lord, that, Father, you would accept us. I know you will because your word says that you will by no means cast away anyone who would come to you. So, Father, we thank you for that promise because in reality, none of us are worthy to be in your presence, but you're allowing us to be here. And so, Father, we just want to worship you, we want to praise you, we want to thank you, we want to love you tonight. And so we just pray, Lord God, that your, um, your ears, your heart, your spirit is pleased by the worship that rises up from this place tonight. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Pastor Steve. Praise the Lord. I really appreciate the words that uh, Pastor David shared today. As he was sharing them, I was thinking to myself how we constantly, constantly have to come to the Lord to make things right, to keep things right. And I was thinking of the scripture that says, the righteous man falls seven times, but seven times he gets up. And I was thinking it could read, the righteous man falls 10 times, and 10 times he gets up. Or the righteous man falls 50 times, but 50 times he gets up. It's that time that you fail to get up and come back to the Lord that's going to do you in. But how wonderful that our Lord draws us, waits for us, and when we come, he meets with us. And so today, as Pastor David said, none of us is worthy, but we are welcome. And so today, let's give him our best, see what he wants to do with us and for us tonight. I could stand outside your gates and never enter in. I could let this moment pass and go my way again. I could just keep silent and hold from you my praise. Or I could give my heart away. I choose to worship. I choose to love you to reach out and touch your heart I want to know you here in this moment oh I choose to worship you sing that with me again I could stand outside your gates and never enter in I could let this moment pass and go my way again 
I could just keep silent and hold from you my praise, or I could give my heart away. I choose to worship, I choose to love you, to reach out and touch your heart. I want to know you here in this moment. Oh, I choose to worship you. I won't stand outside your gates and never enter in. I won't let this moment pass and go my way again. How can I keep silent and hold from you my praise? Lord, I give my heart away. I choose to worship. I choose to love you, to reach out and touch your heart. I want to know you here in this moment. Oh, I choose to worship you. I choose to worship. I choose to love you, to reach out and touch your heart. I want to know you here in this moment. Oh, I choose to worship you. Oh, I choose to worship you. Oh, I choose to worship you. Jesus, my passion in life is to know you. May all other goals bow down to this journey of loving you more. Jesus, you showered your goodness on me. You've given your gifts so freely. But there's one thing I'm longing for. Hear my heart's cry and my prayer for this life. Above all else, Above all else, above all else, give me yourself. Above all else, above all else, above all else, give me yourself. Savior, the more that I see your beauty, the more that I glimpse your glory, my heart is captured by you. Jesus, you are my greatest treasure, nothing this world can offer could ever compare to you. Hear my heart's cry and my prayer for this life. Above all else, above all else, above all else, Hear my heart's cry and 
my prayer for this life above all else above all else above all else give me yourself hear my heart's cry and my prayer for this life above all else above all else above all else give me yourself above all else above all else above all else give me yourself more than I ever needed you I need you now I humbly bow before your throne. Lord, I ask you to receive the gift I bring, the only thing that I can give. For now I see it's the least that I can do. I give my life to you as a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable to you. This is not too much to ask. More than I ever loved you, Lord, I love you now. I wonder how I lived alone. Lord, I ask you to receive my offering. The song I sing to you alone. I see it is all I long to do I'll sing my song for you as I sit here at your feet resting in your warm embrace basking in your grace and love for now I see it's the least that I can do I give my life to you as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to you this is not too much to ask my blood 
I come into the holy of holies. All I want to do is to dwell in your presence and drink from the well that never runs dry. All I want to see is the light of your glory. Just one glimpse, just one drink, and my soul is satisfied. Lord, I come, take my life. I offer it to you, a living sacrifice by your grace. By your blood, I come into the holy of holies. All I want to do is to dwell in your presence and drink from the well that never runs dry. All I want to see is the light of your glory just one glimpse just one drink and my soul is satisfied all i want to do is to dwell in your presence and drink from the well that never runs dry all i want to see is the light of your glory just one glimpse just one drink oh just one glimpse just one drink oh just one glimpse just one drink and my soul is satisfied. Lord, I thirst for you. I long to be in your presence my soul will wait on you father draw me nearer draw me nearer to the beauty of your My soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your holiness. I will wait for you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. Lord, I thirst for you. I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your holiness. I will wait for you, Almighty God, 
in the beauty of your holiness. I will worship you, almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. I will wait for you, almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness i will worship you almighty god in the beauty of your holiness lord i thirst for you i long to be in your presence my soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your but you satisfies Lord Jesus I am thirsty Jesus I am thirsty won't you come and fill me earthly things have left me dry only you can satisfy is more of you all i want is more of you all i want is more of you nothing i desire
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty, for my soul longs and even faints for For here my heart is satisfied Within your presence I sing beneath the shadow of your wings One thing I and I would see to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells one thing I ask and I I would seek to see your beauty to find you in the place your glory dwells better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere my heart and flesh cry out for you the living god your spirit's water for my soul. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. Better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you the living God, your spirit's water for my soul. I've tasted and I've seen, come once again to me. I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. Better is one day. Better is one day, 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 better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere, than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere.
way. Oh, thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. Better is one day. Better is one day, Lord. Better is one moment to be in your presence than to be anywhere else. How we've longed for this moment, this place, this time. And it's unlike any other time we've ever been here before. Give us a new revelation of who you are, Jesus. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere, than thousands elsewhere. thousands elsewhere and thousands elsewhere and thousands elsewhere Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, I know we don't we don't walk by feelings and we don't Bible instructs us not to walk by sight, right? But if you could feel what's going on in this place right now. If you could just feel what's happening in this place right now. I feel like somebody just covered me with a blanket. I, I really, really do. And I just feel this sense that that the Lord is spreading himself upon us, over us. All I can think of is is the son of the Shunammite woman, where the, the prophet went, he stretched himself over the boy, his hands on his hands, and, and, and his arms on his, and his mouth on his mouth. And, and, and that's all I can really liken it to. But I just get this sense that the Lord wants to spread himself upon, over, throughout his people. And tonight, I know that he's doing that. I know that he's done it. But see, my God is awesome because we serve we serve a God of the of we serve the abundant God. Right? I, I want to be careful and say we uh, you know, because I've thought before that we we serve the the God of the too much, but we just serve the God of of the cup runneth over. Amen. And so what he started here tonight, he's not, 
he's not looking to end it anytime soon. And so please understand that it's not the fact that we're in this building. It's the fact that what we did tonight, we came into his presence with purpose, with intention, just to touch him. And if we always will come into his presence with that purpose, if I can only, if I could only, if I could just see him, if I could just touch him, imagine what would be happening, not only in your life and in your home, but in your neighborhood, in your families. If we would just purpose to do that, I know we do that. I know we purpose to do that every time we come together. But there's just something special about being in the place where we've called, we've called to him, you know? This is the place here that we've called to him. And it, it, there's just something special about being at that place, you know? About being at that place. And so... You know, I, I really feel that I have a word for, for everyone who's listening tonight. Whatever that situation is that you have in your life, um, the Lord is covering it. See, and, and, and we know that we're covered by his blood, right? We know we're covered by his blood. But he is covering it so no one else can see it. He's covering it so the enemy can't see it. He's covering it so that, you know, I think about Mephibosheth. And Pastor Steve had this powerful word one time when he, when he taught that. And he said that because Mephibosheth, if, if you read in the word of God where King David said that you will, you will eat at my table. You will eat bread at my table all the days of your life. And Pastor Steve said something once years ago. And we know that back in the biblical times, we weren't really sitting at a table. Or, but, you know, Pastor Steve made this, he, he made this reference to sitting at the table. And he said at the table, if he's sitting at the table, at the king's table, because my guess is that the king had a table. You know, us peasants didn't have a table, but the king had a table. Everyone looked the same at the table of the king. You couldn't tell that Mephibosheth was lame in his feet. And if you looked from afar, if you came up close, there was no way that you could tell that Mephibosheth was lame in his feet because it, he was covered. And with that in mind, I really feel that the Lord, I, I trust that the Lord is doing the same thing here. There are things in our lives that we just, we don't want people to see or we don't want people to know or things that are happening right now that we just, we just want to keep away. And the Lord said, no, he said, bring it out and I will cover it. I will cover it because the enemy will, will do all, all he can to try to uncover, to try to expose. And the Lord says, I will cover it. And when he covers it, there's no exposing it because it's no longer there. It is covered. And so, whoever that's a word for tonight, I know it is one for us. You know, we're going through some stuff, but, but so are you. So are you. But, you know, we, we called upon, upon a very merciful God, the very merciful God tonight, the God of mercy, the God of comfort, the God of strength, the God of power and the God of might. That's who we called upon tonight. And that same God who is the God of compassion. He inclined his ear to us. He heard. And, and I trust he's doing that for us. He's doing that for you at home. There's just this special feeling and the special presence inside of this building tonight. And um, I, I didn't want to... Um, I didn't want to lose that. I didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to go without addressing it because the Lord is here in this place tonight. Amen. 
Pastor Steve shared a, uh, a b- portion of scripture this morning, and, and I'm, I'm going to start where he pretty much ended. And if you would turn, to, turn with me, I'll see, if you turn to me, if you would turn with me to John chapter 21. And to give the same backstory that Pastor Steve gave this morning, um, you know, Jesus had already been crucified. Jesus, Jesus was gone. And, and, and at this point, Peter said, well, I, I'm going, I'm just going to go back fishing. I'm just going to go fishing. In other words, he was going to go back to his former life. And, you know, Peter was the, Peter was, Peter, Peter was the head of the guys, right? And so what were they going to do? They, they were going to follow suit. And in chapter 21 of, of, of the book of John, it, it says that they went out fishing and they caught nothing. And then when they're coming back in, they see this, this man on the shore. And, um, and he says, cast, cast your, your nets out on the other side of the boat. And, and so they did that. And they pulled in 153 large fish. Joe, Bible says 153 large fish. See, these aren't taco-sized fish. See, uh, when I used to go fishing, I would, I would rate my catch by is this taco size or not, right? And if it's getting late in the day and you haven't caught anything, well, you start counting the tail and the head, right, to see if it's taco size, right? If you can fit it in a, in a tortilla, it's taco size. Well, these were not taco size fish. These were feet of family fish. Bible, Bible is very descriptive in all things. And when it comes to this, it says it's 153 very large fish. So when they came to shore, you know, the Bible says that they pulled in the nets, 153, and, and, and they didn't even rip the nets. Amen? That's got to be Jesus. And so we're going to... We're gonna, um, we're going to catch up in the story in verse 15 of chapter 21 of John. It says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third, this third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger... You girded yourself and walked, your, or you walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you, don't, where you do not wish. This he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken these, this, he said to him, follow me. And you know, in, in, my, in my Bible, the heading of that portion of scripture says, Jesus restores Peter. And, and that, that, that means a bunch to me. That means a bunch to me because um, there was a time to where I didn't follow Jesus. And then there was a time to where I began following Jesus. And there was a time to where I blew it. And, 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 and you know, um, Peter is always a bright spot in my life. Because I can be very cantankerous. I can be very foot in my mouth ish I can be I can be very strong and 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 be and be a, a, a leader and then I can also be a leader and a teacher of things that you shouldn't do so sometimes you will see and hear from me and it's like yeah, those, those are the things I want I want to do what pastor David is saying and when David says things sometimes I could just blow it I can just blow it and, and, and maybe that's not something you want to hear from this pulpit. 
You know, a lot of people want to hear from the pulpit that, that, that you know, this man's got it all together and, and he does and, and, all, and, he, and all these kind of things. And, 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 but you know what? Um, the truth is, is that I do have it all together when I'm following Jesus. And, and, and so, you know, the Word of God says, follow me as I follow Christ. And the only thing that I can tell you or any man or woman of God can tell you is follow me as I follow Christ. Because here in in this portion of Scripture where Jesus said, follow me, Peter at some point in his life had to say, okay, and said to someone at some point, follow me. And you know, there's people out there who knew Peter. Follow him. We think of, we think of the, the Apostle Paul. And, and when in the very beginning, when, 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 the dream, when, when the dream came down, right? And he says, I want you to go and you're going to meet a man named Paul. He said, like, Lord, this is, this, is, this, is, this is Saul. This is the one who was persecuting the church, right? So he knew who he was. And sometimes people will say, Peter, I know Peter, I don't really want to follow Peter. He's the one who denied the Lord. Well, you know what? That could be said about a lot of us. That could be said about me. I mean, my actions at times in my life have, have denied that I've ever even known him. But the fact that this is the scripture where we are told that Jesus restores Peter. I love the scripture. I know Pastor Steve loves it. I love it when, when Jesus says, go and tell the, the disciples and Peter. See, our restoration and our, our, our redemption always happens at, at, at the scene of the crime. See, it always happens at the scene of the crime. I know, I know that Max Lucado once said that, that at, at the that even before the crunch of the apple, the echo of the crunch of the apple in the Garden of Eden, even before the echo stopped, the Savior was dispatched. And so even before we fall, Pastor Steve said about a man falling seven times but gets up seven times. Even before our knees hit that ground, the God of compassion is there to meet us. The God, our salvation is there. Our redeemer is there. Our, our restorer is there. And I, I am so overcome to know that the Lord would even consider to restore me. And and, you know, I have my ticket, so to speak, punched, right? According to what the scriptures say, I, I, my ticket is punched. And, and my prayer and my belief is that yours is too. But it has to go beyond prayer and belief. Because unless someone would have had the time and the heart to stop and tell me about Jesus, I wouldn't have known him. I'm sure I wouldn't have known him. I'm sure I would still be laughing at them people. Them people. Right? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. Please. Do you love the Lord this evening? Amen. Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Tonight's message is entitled Making Disciples. And, you know, 
I, I love what the Lord does when he wants to say something. Because Pastor Steve was sharing some of this this morning. So I'm not, I'm not riding in on his coattails. We're just, we're just both following the Lord. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Right? Amen? And so th- this evening, I just want to share this with you. It's, it's, it's brief, but I, I trust that it's going to be powerful for me. And I hope that it's powerful for you. Um, in that small portion of scripture, I, I wanted to, I digged out. I wanted, I wanted to dig, 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 dig out, right? Right? Yeah, that's right. I wanted to dig out and unpack this scripture for you. And so the Lord gave me three points in this. And it's not, you know, it's not a three-point message or anything like that. But there are three points that I, I really want to to hone in on this evening. Um, my first question is to you is, is what does it mean to make a disciple? What, you know, and, 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 and I don't, I'm not asking for a verbal answer from you, but, but ask yourself, what does it mean to make a disciple? We know that a disciple is a learner and a follower of Jesus. A disciple is a learner and a follower of someone. Amen. In the context that we're speaking of tonight, a, a disciple is a learner and a follower of Jesus. See, when we make disciples, we are working to see people who do not follow Jesus come to follow him and then teaching them to faithfully follow Jesus in every area of their lives. And that sounds like work, Whew, right? That sounds like work. And, and, and the reason why it sounds like work is because it is work. Because it is work. I, I, um, I will tell you that when I came to the Lord, um, there was a lot of diaper changing for me. Not me changing a diaper, people changing my diaper. People f- hand feeding me and, and people, yeah, 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 right? People, and people burping me and people spanking me and people, it, it's just, it's, it's the way it was. And in today's church, what I am seeing, because I just know today's church up to about 20 years ago. I know a lot of you know today's church, today's church or know the church for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. I, 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 don't, I don't know the church that way. But I know my God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. So the church shouldn't be changing all that much, Right? But I know today, especially with the environment and the way that people can be today, it, it can be a little more difficult to disciple somebody. Because what are you doing? You're, you're, you're teaching and you're correcting. And you're loving, but you're correcting. And you're guiding. And you're, and you're changing diapers. And you're hand feeding. And so... The reason why I mention that is because there's, there's a lot of different ways that we can disciple people. In the Word of God where it says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, uh, we just read this a second ago, and Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold... I am with you always to the end of the age. So my first point is go. Is go. Is go. There's different portions of scripture where, the, where Jesus says go. Go ye therefore. Go. 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 Listen, I, I am going to tell you that I have, I have ministered to people from, from my bed or from my couch or from my backyard, but that was incidental. That was something the Lord, I need this done, and I need it done now, and I need it done. I need you to get this phone call. I need, I need you to let this person over your house. I need this to happen in your life. But other than that, we have to go. Joe, at your house, and we're talking to Joe, who is a resident fisherman, Okay. So pretend like you can see him. But Joe, at your house, how many fish do you catch 
from your recliner inside your living room. I saw a hand go up, and I think I saw five, but I think that was zero. How many, you catch, you catch no fish from your couch. Why? Because you've got to go, you've got to get in your boat, you've got to go out, you've got to, you've got to get in the water, you've got to launch out, you've got to get to where you need to get to, and then you got to, and then you have to cast out. That's a lot of work. For me, H salt fish and chips. Right? For me, H salt. Right? For me, I'm just waiting for Joe to catch, to call me when he comes back. Amen? I'm not a fisherman. But the reason why I don't go is because I, I just, I, all that stuff, it's like a lot of work. I, I, Pastor Steve, are you a fisherman? It, why? Same. Right? It's like, uh, <sighs> I'm already tired. Right? And it has nothing to do with anyone being lazy or this or that. It's just that it's just not our cup of tea. It's just not. The only way you're going to catch a fish is if you go and put something in the water and, and, and you intend to catch a fish. Well, when, when, G, when Jesus says, or when the, when our, when the Word of God says for us to go, we have to first go. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter 8. We're going to start in verse 26. And it says, Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. I'm going to stop there for a second, all right? This is why I don't necessarily, in the flesh, I don't want to go anywhere. Because every time the Lord sends me somewhere, it's somewhere that I don't like. It's somewhere that's uncomfortable for me. It's somewhere that's hot and nasty. It may even be with people that I don't want to be with. And that's, that's, that's listen, that's no, that's, I'm not sliding anyone. There's a lot of people who probably don't want to be with me. But, you know, I mean, it's just, just not, not comfortable in that situation. This is what he did with Philip. And immediately, the Bible says, immediately in the first sentence, it says, and this was desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I, unless someone guides me, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does this, of whom does the prophet say this of him, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture, preach Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities, Till he came 
to, to Caesarea. Okay. This is a go, if I've ever heard a go. All right? And, and it's not even a go. It's, the Lord didn't even send an Uber, right? The Bible says that Philip was caught away. Philip was caught up. The Lord took him, and he picked him up, and he, he dropped him off in Gaza. Right? And, and I, know, I know for me it's difficult when I think about it. And, and, and I know there's a lot of other people who say, yeah, oh, come on. See, this is why I can't believe the Bible. Well, I, I can't believe the Bible because I try to, try to fathom how it goes. And I have never been caught up or caught away. But you know what? The word is the word. It's true because Jesus said it's true. And so I'm going to believe it. And, and I encourage you to do the same. And so... He went. You see, the, the thing was, is this. The Lord summoned him. And the Bible says, and Philip got up and he went. So when, when in, in Matthew chapter 28, when it says, go therefore. Disciples aren't going to come and knock on your door and say, I don't know what it is that I want, but I want it. And can you give me some? Have you ever asked for anything? Have you ever asked for anything? Have you, have you ever asked anybody for something? Have you? Have you? And, and, and so how does it go? Hi, how you doing? Um, can you lend me 20 bucks? Right? And that person will either, oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. Here. Or else they'll say, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. I, I'm out. You don't go up to somebody. You don't say, Hi. That was pretty uncomfortable, right, Pastor Steve? Because I was staring at him, and he's going, right? But that, that, that it gets uncomfortable, right? But the reason why it's uncomfortable is because he has no idea what I want. And so people aren't going to come to you asking you for salvation, asking you for redemption, asking you for compassion, asking you for, for, for healing, if they have no idea what they need. As Christians, as seasoned Christians, and I'm going to go so far as saying anyone who, who, who has been saved and recognizes that the Lord has changed their life is a seasoned Christian. It could be a week. It could be 50 years in the Lord. I've seen a lot of people in the Lord for a week who have been more willing to do things for the Lord than people who have been with the Lord for 50 years. So, so it's, it's not necessarily the span of time that they're serving the Lord. But the idea is this. They're not going to come asking you. We have to go. We have to go as the church. We have to go as the body of Christ. Pastor Steve was mentioning this morning that we came here and we, and we got filled with something. And, 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 and I believe the same thing that Pastor Steve said this morning, that the things that we get, the things that the Lord gives him are not for him. They're for someone else. And, and, and it doesn't mean that he can't partake. You know, imagine, imagine you go pick up, you go through drive through and you pick up, and Mary says, you know what, I, I want a large fry, and I want a filet of fish, and I want, I want whatever. And, I, and, and so Pastor Steve goes by, and he picks up, right? And so we're going through the drive through we're going to pick up, and then we're going to drop them off, right? And so, you know, Pastor Steve says, here's the bag, hold the bag. And so I'm holding the bag, and, and so I'm trying to close it, but that one French fry won't let it close. So i got to pull it out and say, you're a bad French fry, and I eat it, right? Because I need to make sure that, Pastor Mary has her hot, fresh fries, right? So I, I, I'm going to try it, and I'm going to close it so the bag would be sealed, right? And then we drop off her food, right? We drop, so it doesn't mean that the things that the Lord gives us, we can't partake of. It's just not for us to hoard, right? He gives them to us so we can, we can, we can have our sustenance so, because he, he sustains us. He keeps us, right? He keeps us. Once we're sustained, then it's on. Then it's on. And so don't for one second think that you, you run to Kaiser to get your, your prescription or you run to Stater Brothers, oh, I got to go over here. Don't think for one second 
that you're going there because you, have, you forgot milk yesterday. You're going there because the Lord is sending you there. You're going there because there is a specific reason why you're there. He's using the fact that you forgot milk yesterday. But the person that he needed to be ministered to today wasn't there last night at 1030 when you're running out with ding-dongs and all these kind of healthy foods, right? So he sends you back because the lady at the register whose son, who lost her son or, or who's, who's, who, who her husband walked out on her or something was there. And she needed to hear from you, you know what? Jesus loves you. You take your milk and you walk out. And I'll guarantee you, not because I know all and see all, but I know my God. And probably four ladies back in that line is just mad at herself because she, she forgot the creamery last night. And then she's up in this line, and this lady's just like, oh, oh welcome, Stater Brothers. Thank you. Just, you know what? Can I hug you? Because that's what you women do, right? Come on, come on. Right, right? And you're sitting there hugging this lady at Stater Brothers, and people are, and you're, you're just, you know what? I just, I just felt like the Lord wanted to hug you. So God bless you. And you pick up your creamer and you walk out. And an hour later, and so do you see what I'm saying? And see, God, there's nothing about happenstance. I was driving the other day, and I was thinking. I, was, I love the idea that man was allowed to name things, right? And so I'm, I always think about how the Lord thinks and, and, and how he, and so I, I, I man, I'm thinking about how about this or how about that or what what he was thinking this and what what he was thinking that. And man, the Lord gave me a heavy reverie and he says, I don't think. I know. To think is to try to figure something out. To know is never having to figure anything out. And I was like, oh, man, I love serving you. That's the kind of God I want to serve. Because I don't know, I was thinking something really like earth shattering, like why frog? You know, or something, you know. I mean, you know, right? right? And, and the Lord's like, no, no, no. That was my idea. And so for one second, don't think that you're in a place because you forgot this or you forgot that. Listen, if you've got to run somewhere because that happened, thank God and start looking. In the spirit, we should be, we should be. Man, we should have we should have the camel thing on, right? And the and the trees in our hair and right? We should be ready. Right? We should be ready. And you make walk out of that place and saying, Lord, there was there was nothing. There was nothing. Maybe he just wants you to be prepared. Maybe the lady that you let go before you, because she had one item and you had ten. Maybe she needed to get out of there. We don't know. All I know is that if you trust the Lord, knowing that he's probably going to send you to the desert, it may not be your desert. It may just be someone else's. And my job is to go to their desert and bring some fresh spring water and bring some sustenance for them. And bring one of Mary's fries. Whatever it is that they need, whatever it is that the Lord gave you, it's for someone else. This is going to like throw you for a loop. Surprise. But I'm I'm, I'm an avid Twilight Zone guy. I love Twilight Zone. Thanksgiving Day, don't even bother me. You know, I, I just love Twilight Zone. And there's this one, I can, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of it. But there's this gentleman, and he's, and he's a peddler, and he sells things. He sells things. And, and, and um, somebody needs this, or somebody needs it. And he'll go, and he'll say, here, take this. And it's like a bottle of spot remover. And he goes, why? why, why? Well, you're going to need it. And five minutes later, the guy spills something on his tie right before a meeting. 
you know, and, and a string or something, and the guy needs the string because his button fell off, or, or, or uh, a pair of scissors. The guy, what do I want a pair of scissors for? And, and, and later on, he, his, his, his scarf gets stuck in the elevator, and there goes the scarf, right? Well, you know, he pulls a pair of scissors out of his pocket, and, and he starts to cut, and just, <laughs> right? And then he's thinking about this old man, and he runs to find this old man. Let me tell you something. Whoever had, you know, Rod Surly, as, as, he, he was as brilliant as this guy. This guy is kind of strange, but just strange enough to get my attention. But this man, this little old man that he, he, he wrote this 30-minute segment on, it's just an idea of who God is. Because God will bring you something. And you look at it. You've been praying for something. The Lord, you've been praying, I, oh, Lord, I need, a, I, I need some water. Lord, I need some water. And he brings you an empty cup. And like, I asked for water. I asked for water and you bring, see, Lord, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And five minutes later, this gusher of water just comes. And he goes, drink all you want. So when the Lord gives you something and he says, go. And you may be walking down the street with a pogo stick in your hand. Now, why do I have this? Huh? Huh? A unicycle. Why do I have this? But you got to bet. And you're laughing over there. But when I see you walking down the street with a unicycle, I'm going to honk and I'm going to laugh at you. Because that unicycle is for something. And, 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 yeah, it sounds funny, and we're laughing and all these kind of things. The reason why I'm trying to make it sound so outlandish is because if it was an empty cup, it's just as outlandish as a pogo stick or a unicycle because it's absolutely what I do not need. Well, when the Lord blesses you, he's blessing you with something that someone else needs. And I guarantee you this, that if you give that cup to the person who needs it, they're going to drink from it, and you're going to drink from it. I guarantee you. Because that is my God. That is my God. So we first have to go. Amen? We first have to go. And then it says, it says, go, therefore. So that was one. Number two is, make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of who? All nations. What is all nations? Is all nations the people in your little pod at work? Is all nations the, uh, your next door neighbor only? Is all nations just the people with the same last name as you? No, all nations is everyone. 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 I, I have a friend, and you guys, you guys know who my friend is. I have a friend. His name is Fernando Zamora, and he comes here to the Spanish service. And Fernando speaks about this much English. And I speak about that much Spanish. But yet we talk all the time. And he'll say something and he'll like, um, um, and I'll say, tell me in Spanish. And he'll say it. And I'll say, uh, that is banana. Yeah, banana. He goes, oh, see, 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 banana. Right? And then I'll say something and I'm like, man, I can't. I don't know. And he goes, dime en español. Or dime en inglés. And I'll tell him in English. And he'll say, and he'll give me the word for it. And we communicate. We communicate. And so, you know, there's no reason, there's no excuse for communicating or I can't this or I can't that or I can't the other. The Bible says to go ye therefore to, and make disciples of all nations. Make disciples of uh, whether they're black or white or orange or green or purple or pink or polka dot, it doesn't matter. Whether they speak a different language, whether they're from, they're from a different continent or a different family or, or, or it doesn't matter. It just says to go. To go. Now, I'm, I'm going to use an example here of Lucia. Because I know that there's, there, she is famous, not infamous. She's famous for having a, her little church inside of, of a bathroom at Fender. And people would make fun of her for being a Christian, but when they needed something, <gasps> can I talk to you real quick? I got to talk to you. And there they go, right into the bathroom. And Lucia would pray for them, and, and they would give their lives to the Lord or whatever the situation may be. And they would come back in a week and say, oh, remember the thing we prayed for? Oh, look at this happened and this happened. Praise God. And some people will say, well, well, see, the Lord's bringing them to her. You know why? Because she has already shown herself faithful to go 
And they're saying, you know what? Don't go anymore. I'm going to bring the fish to you. I'm going to bring the fish to you. If you know Lucia, if you've ever gone, if you've ever gone out to dinner with Joe and Lucia, okay? If you've ever gone out to dinner with Joe and Lucia, you can bet that your meal is going to be 15 to 20 minutes late. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the lady will come over here and say, sir, what, what would you like? And, and Joe would say, oh, I'll take this. And Terry would say, I'll take this. And Pastor Steve would say, I'll take this. And Pastor Mary would say, I'll take this. And Lucia would say, do you know Jesus? And for those who know Lucia, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's just like, oh. No, it's like, honestly, well, we just close our menus. And we just wait. Because the Lord's going to do something. And 15 minutes, the last time it happened, this young girl was just weeping. I'm sorry, I'm going to get, I hope I'm going to get in trouble. And she says, no, no, you're not going to get in trouble. And Lucia's telling her, you're not going to get in trouble. And, and, and she's just weeping. And it was about 15 minutes later. And she went and she came back and she was, okay, what else can I get you guys? See, she's gone so much that now the Lord is just bringing them to her. You know why? Because she's been faithful in the going. And now the Lord says, no matter what, I know that whoever I see, I've seen her, I've seen her minister to young ladies and older ladies. I've seen her minister to young men and older men or just, and I don't mean, I don't mean, you know, laying hands. I just mean, do you know Jesus? And so we have to go. We have to go. We have to go. And then we have to make disciples. And so to make disciples is to tell them about Jesus. But you know what's more important than that? We have to show them Jesus first. Because if we're sitting at the table and Pastor Mary and Pastor Steer, chug, 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 right? Right? Got me by the feet like that with the beer bong. They're not going to care about what Lucia says. But if you're showing them Jesus from the beginning, God bless you. Great to have you as our server. You're very nice. You're this. You're that. Amen. Praise the Lord. They see us praying for our food. They see us laughing. They see us sharing scripture. This. Then it becomes enticing. Right? What do you got over there? But if it wasn't enticing, there would have been nothing. She wouldn't, she wouldn't have even talked to you, Lucia. So the making disciples happens way before we even say something. The making of the disciples is the attraction of Jesus in your life and in mine. It's someone looking from afar. And see us picking up that wallet and opening it up and seeing there's a wad of money in there. And you know and I know that $37,000 is something that I can use and you can use. And the first thing we do is walk right back in the store and say, I found this outside. I don't know whose it is. It doesn't have an ID in it but I found it outside. I want to give you my name. I want to make sure it goes to the right person. I want to talk to a manager, and I want to make sure that, that someone gets their money back. I've gone back, and I've said, hey, you've overcharged me 99 cents, and I've had people tell me, just go. I can't just go. Because that's stealing. Well, how is it stealing if I let you go? Because you let me steal. So now you're an accomplice. Here's your 99 cents. And people have laughed at me and made fun of me and all these kinds. But you know what? That is the beginning of ministry. The beginning of ministry is people seeing you from afar. And so we're making disciples long before we even open our mouths. We're making disciples when people are looking from afar. So when it says go... You can best bet that the Lord has already had those people checking you out way before you go. Because if you had a bad witness to that person, do you think he's going to send you? Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the point three teaching them to observe all that I have 
commanded you. Teaching them. What does a teacher do? Teach them. I have, I have no credentials. The state of California. I have, I, I, haven't, I, have, I haven't taken one gen ed class. I haven't, I haven't taken one, you know, class that would go towards my teaching credential. But my Bible tells me I don't need any of that. Yeah, I may need it to teach math and science and stuff. But I'm not looking to teach science. I want to teach Jesus. I want people to tell. I love Let me tell you something. I love to hear this. I love to hear when I tell somebody my, my testimony. I love, to, I, I love to hear, no way. You're lying. You know Why? Because they can't even, because what God does, he does brand new over again. And when you tell them, this is what the Lord has done for me. And there's like, no way. And then someone else, yes way, yes way. And then someone else, yes way, you should have seen it before. And yes way, and yes way. And they're like, whoa, I want some of that. That is teaching them. Because for me, teaching them is not only telling them my, my, my testimony, but telling them that that happened over 20 years ago. They go, and you're still, yeah, God's good, man. God has kept me. God has kept me. I just stood up, and he took me, and he's kept me. And he will do the same thing for you. Teaching them. I had mentioned a little earlier about, you know, the, the sign of the time. Just the, just the times, and you, you really can't tell people things anymore because, you know, they want to shoot you or they want to run you off the road or they want to tell you something, or you ain't the boss of me and all that kind of nonsense. Do you know why that is? So we won't disciple. That's what the enemy does in our world. Don't you dare tell my child that he can't do that. Don't you dare tell my child no. Right? And so it kind of starts at that age, right? And then it gets, and then you get 50-year-old lady saying, you're not the boss of me, right? Or 50-year-old guy saying, you're not the boss of me. And so people get angry, and you can't tell them a thing. Try telling them to sit down, right, in the jury box or, or in the jury room, right? Right? Well, I don't want to be here, right? See, the enemy is very, very good at what he does. But my God is much better. My God is much better. See, we don't want to tell people because we don't want to disrespect. We don't want to anger. We don't want to upset. We don't want to push the envelope. We don't want to ruffle any feathers. We don't want this. We don't want that. When I was a kid, my neighbors would put me in check and then walk me home and tell my dad they put me in check. And my dad would say, oh. Now, they wouldn't hit me because my dad would, well, wait a second, it's my child. Don't you hit my child, right? But, okay, thank you, right? And I'm going to love my son, and he'll go in and, ah! right? <laughs> Nowadays, you can't do that. Nowadays, you can't even spank your own child because, you know, they got CPS on speed dial, right? Well, the enemy does that, and he does that over, over generation and over generation and over generation till we are where we are now. So that we, as the body of Christ, are hesitant. Where, I, I don't know if I, uh, we're scared. We're scared to say, hey, hey brother, you, you, you really can't say that. Hey, bro, you, hey, can I talk to you for a second? You know, you really shouldn't be looking at the ladies like that, you know, in the, in the house of God. And so, so we're afraid to do that. We're afraid to get slugged in the chops in the, in the house of God, right? But the word of the Lord is the same. And it says to disciple, to teach, to teach them to follow God and teach them in the precepts that he has put forth. The precepts that we were taught, the way we were taught, the things we were taught that was all from here, and we're... We're called to make disciples, to make little yous, right? Oh, man, I love the fact when Pastor Steve 
taught me the first time that, that, that pastors don't, oh no, sheep make sheep. Sheep beget sheep. Right? It, it, the sheep go out and make other sheep. And us as being the sheep, we need to go out. We need to love people enough to be able to say, hey, bro, I see that you're new here. Would you like to come sit with us? Uh, no, okay, but can we talk afterwards? Yeah, no problem. And, you, and, and you, then you start, you start discipling. And you start loving. And they start cussing up a storm and smoking a cigarette out front. And, and, and you're just like, hey, you know what? Uh, you need an ashtray? You know? Not smacking them with your Bible saying, you know what? You're going to hell. Thou is going to hell if in a hand basket if. Right? No. You love them into the kingdom. And when you start loving people into the kingdom of God, if they want any, just, just an iota, if they just want a little tiny, 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 tiny bit, and they've enjoyed that little bit, they're going to come back. And it may be difficult. And it may be hard. And you may want to give up. But know this, that people wanted to give up on you when you were difficult and when you were hard, and you didn't want to listen to the word, and you didn't want to follow the word, and you didn't, and I did it, and we did it, and people didn't give up on us. We have no business giving up on others. So if you see young ladies come in, ladies, if you see young ladies come in and they're, and they're just, they're, just they're, they're not dressed for church, love them. Love them into your lives and, and, and look for an opportunity. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not in a week, maybe in a month and say, hey, you know, make, maybe a little lower. And, and if you love them and show them respect from the beginning, they may say, Phew. But, but they're, they'll be hungry for that. And so start discipling them. Start showing them. Start showing them Jesus in your life so they can see. Because I'll tell you, they're doing this. As you walk, they're doing the same thing. They're, they're like, okay, okay, this is, this, okay. All right, I think I got this. I think I got this. I think I got this. And we're called to take them under our wing and to lead them and guide them in the ways of Jesus, until they're able to go and fly on their own. And then we go and find another. And they go and they fly and they find another. That's it. That's it. So let, 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 me, let me just kind of try to button this up after unpacking it all. And tell you this, you may be looking at me and saying, this, this is the most boring message I've ever heard in my life. This is a bunch of nonsense. Well, I'll tell you why it's nonsense if you're saying that. Because you don't want to go in the first place. See, I've got my ticket punched. I said that in the beginning of this message. I've got my ticket punched. And you know, let me, let me, just, let me just tell you. Let me just, hey, you you want to hear it? Naked before God and everyone, there have been times past to where I'm just like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to minister to that guy. I'm just not going to do it. And I did it. And I don't know what happened to that guy. But you know, I stayed dry because it was raining outside. And I didn't have to get out of my car. You know what that does to me inside right now? And so, I don't allow myself to get so comfortable with my comfort anymore. And my wife knows if it's raining and somebody needs a jacket, I've, I, you know, and, and listen, this isn't a pat on my back, but I've sat there at the corner by Carl's Jr. and got out in the rain. And it's pouring and this man's going across the, the, the street in his, little, in his little car because he couldn't walk. And, and, and I got out with the umbrella and I'm running him across the street and it's pouring, it's pouring. And I give him my umbrella and he goes, oh, here's your umbrella. I go, no, 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 be blessed. God bless you. Really, it's raining outside. God bless you. And I get back in my car and I'm soaked. And I look at my wife and my wife's going, and she's just crying. Because she's, she, she's seen what the Lord can do through me. Understand, I'm not sitting here telling you that I did this great thing. The Lord provided an opportunity. I had an umbrella. The man was getting wet. I wasn't getting wet. He shouldn't be getting wet either. And I think he went and told somebody. And said, I don't know. You know, some people say, oh, this my guardian angel met me. Well, it ain't me, brother, because I'm far from that. I was just a dude 
the right place, at the right time, looking for an opportunity. And so, in closing, I want to say this. There are others right now who are saying, well, I, I can't do that, or I'm like this, and I'm, not th- and I'm, and I'm like this, and I, I don't really, and I'm shy. And, and so I'm just going to say something. Um, stop it and be quiet. Because at the end of this portion of Scripture, it says, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I am with you always to the end of the age. So if you are shy... Don't you think God already knows that before he sent you? So if he sent you and if you go, he's going to make you the most, the boldest person on the face of this earth. If you can't speak their language, the Lord will cause you to be able to communicate with them. If you go. We never look at this place and say, this place is empty, it's empty, it's empty, it's empty, it's empty. We, we don't. We, we just don't. But, but if, I, if, if, if I could just be honest with you, it's empty. And part of it is because I'm not going out and I'm not bringing them in. And so I personally have to go out and bring them in. And, and I can't say that for you or you. You do what the Lord has you do. I just have to go and minister to more people and tell them where we're at And say, we're open, please come. That's how I was one to the Lord. That's how you were one to the Lord. And that's how this world will be one for Jesus. Amen? For you at home, we thank you so much. I'm sorry, I know it went a little over. I was shooting for four hours, and we did three and a half. Um, But uh, I thank you. Thank you, thank you for being patient with us. We just, I just felt really led to, to share this message from just from the pit of my, my soul, that um, people need to know who he is. And, and he's not the town crier. I am. We are. Amen. God bless you. Have a great evening. We'll be praying for you. Please be praying for us. We love you so much. Lord willing, we'll see you here Tuesday night at 7. Amen. Good night.